Yo, Crawl here. What's up, guys? I decided to do some Discord chaos tutorials because every day new people come into the new live questions or in the live questions on our Discord chaos official server. And a lot of people who do Discord chaos videos or Discord videos how to make a bot are not doing them anymore or not updating them anymore or not active on YouTube anymore or have private reasons to not continue them right now. So I just decided to take a stab at it and I thought we should have a go at this and just see how it goes. Uh, you can find me on GitHub if you go to github.com slash iCrawl. But this is right beside the point because this is not what we're going to do. Uh, first of all, right off the bat, we're just going to dive in straight in. You're going to install Node 8.4 is the version I'm going to use, as long as it doesn't go up a major version, which is in Node 9, which is going to come out in October, I think, or later. I'm going to do a video on that anyway. Uh, we are good to go. We are on the same page and everything is going to be good. So first of all, what you're going to do is you open up your space where you have all your things stored go in there go into the bots folder and we're going to create a new folder right here and we're going to call it yumeco after that we shift right click this is very important otherwise you don't get that prompt here you're going to open a powershell window here or I'll open a command window here it doesn't it depends on which version of windows you are seven eight or nine seven eight or ten i wouldn't say nine seven eight or ten and if you don't have the creators update, you're gonna have a command window here, not the PowerShell yet. But this is besides the issue because it doesn't really matter what you use. After you've installed Node, which is basically taking a lot of Next and you basically set for, uh, you will have access to NPM. And NPM is the package manager for Node packages. What we're gonna do is, right off the bat is we do npm in it this is very important so you get a package json log right uh, not package json log what i'm talking about a package json this is <clears throat> one of the most important things if you want to do git deployment if you want to have your bot on github and then you want to have your bot on your server and you just want to do git pull and you get all the updates you just have written and because a lot of people install a lot of dependencies and you would have to remember which of the dependencies you installed and you wouldn't have any way of configuring them. For example, a package version is number four, but you rely on package version number three, so you need to remember to install version three instead of number four. And this is this can be very, very annoying in the long run, so we're gonna use a package JSON right here. The new package name is gonna be Yumiko, this is gonna be defined. The version, because we're in development right now, we're just gonna go with 010. The description is gonna be, uh, a simple disk got bought. This is not going to be simple. I'm just going to say this right now. Uh, our entry file is going to be the index.js file. What I usually do though is I call it umeco.js. So this is just a preference thing. You can call it index.js. It doesn't really matter, right? Uh, test command. We don't have one. A Git repository. We don't have one yet. I'm going to up this, update this later and tell you guys how to do it correctly. Uh, keywords is going to be like, I don't know, Discord bot. Discord bot. Those are uh, spaced or like separated by a comma. So, you know, because it's an array. The offer is obviously going to be me. I crawled the license. Uh, it prompts you with like an ISC license. It's practically the same as an MIT license. I'm going to use MIT right here though. MIT license means that your code is as is. So everyone can use it. Everyone can modify it. Anyone can republish it, but they need to include your license file. Nobody ever does that which you can point the finger at them if they do. But just so you know, uh, it's gonna list you right here. It's gonna tell you like, is this completely okay? I'm gonna say like, yes, this is completely okay. Then we have a package JSON here. So next thing we're gonna do is like, we need to install this .js. So what we do is actually already type it down. Uh, npm i, um, this .js is gonna be like the usual way how you're gonna do it. But this is not how I'm going to do it because I'm going to use like the 11.2 branch which is going to release soon. So for that, you need git. Git, you can get it very easily. What you need to do is you just type into your Google git or git download Windows or git download Linux, whatever you use. It's super simple. Even your package manager should have it already, right? It's just like apt get install or like yard as git. It's like super easy nothing to worry about. So we're going to do npm i hydra bolt slash discord.js hashtag 11.1 def. What this means is it looks for the hydra bolt repository, uh, hydra bolt account on GitHub, which is where the discord.js repository is hosted. The second argument or the second one after a slash is the discord.js uh, repository. And the hash symbol basically just means it's the 11.1 def branch because we have different branches on our GitHub account. So after we do that, we just install and we just wait. 
because this is what we have to do. And NPM is already way faster, or it should at least be way faster. Okay, there we go. So you see all those warnings right here, right? They don't matter at all. Like they, they just don't give a shit about them. This only means those are additional features you can install if you want to prefer uh, having a bit of a boost. I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to go over them one by one and tell you guys what you need to do to get them installed and what they actually do, because a lot of people don't even know what they do. So after that, we can basically close our terminal window already. We can, we have our Yumiko thing right here. We can actually close that because it's not even important to us anymore. And you use your editor of choice. Mine's going to be visual code, uh, or visual studio code in that sense. And well, what we need to do is we need to open our folder. We don't have it in here, sadly. So we need to open Yumiko right here. Boom. Uh, we're going to reload. The, it's going to automatically reload. And then we are already in here. We have a package log.json. This is very important because this is locking down your dependencies on a specific version. For example, if we're ever going to install SnackFetch again, it's going to be 3.2.9 instead of like 4 if he's ever going to release it. It will never go to 4 because, well, actually it could be. No, let's not talk about that because it's a bit wonky. But yeah, let's just let's just go on and, and do our usual thing. The first thing we need to do is because we already have installed everything, we need to create a file. I call it yumiko.js, so you call it index.js, you call it bot.js, I don't I don't really give a damn. And in there the first thing we need to do is this is ESLint, by the way. I'm going to I'm gonna show all of this in a separate video because it's so annoying to do it, right? So what we need to do is to, we need to get Disco.js into our JavaScript file. And how, basically how you do it is like you just do, uh, you do a constant and then you disco and then you basically just require Disco.js right here. And after you did that, you have full access to it. Um, because I'm going to use JavaScript that's a bit more modern. We're just going to extract the client out of here. And this basically means that we only get the client out of the whole package. Otherwise, you would just import the whole package, which we don't need yet. After that, we do um, another nice thing, which is uh, make a new constant, call it client, and we assign it a new client with an option. So what we do right here is we get the client instance of this got jazz, mm, it's actually a class, right? And we make a new instance of it and assign it the client variable. And what we do right here is, as you can see, if you have VS Code, uh, VS Code, which is super, super good, right? You can see all the things you can provide to it, which is glorious. So the client option we're gonna provide is right, right here. It's called disable everyone. It's a boolean. What this basically does is, I can't type today. This is so fun. What this basically does is very if anyone like if you decide to type like add everyone is uh very nice person i can't type man very nice person right so if you decide to type this into your bot with a command let's say right so your bot would practically say everyone is a nice person what what happens if you don't have this option here uh it will ping everyone the same goes for if you do add here, the difference between those two is that everyone add everyone pings everyone and add here only pings people who are currently online. This is besides the point though, because you don't want to do this ever. And if you want to do it, there is another way you can do it. You can just basically do message.channel.send, uh, put in your whatever we gonna, uh, no, no, no. What are we gonna do tonight? This is what I wanted to write. What are we gonna do tonight, right? And you're gonna do add everyone because you wanna you wanna ask everyone what are we gonna do tonight. And what you can do is you can provide an option right here in the send method, and you can do disable everyone and then set it to false. So this way you don't you, you disable the option again, and this message would trigger everyone. Well, all the other messages wouldn't. This is also very important to do this because if you have a command that sets tags where people can just put in like tags, so someone could come along and be like at here or hi here. And if someone would execute that tag, let's say the tag is called uh, hi, so they would do exclamation mark hi, and the bot would reply with uh, hi here. So what this would basically do is it would ping everyone that's online currently, 
on your Discord server, and you don't want to do that, except you, you might want to do that, but I don't want to do that. So let's not do that. So the next thing we're going to do after that is we look at the events. One of the most important events is going to be the client event. So we're going to do like client.on, this is how you trigger events. And this is going to be called ready. We're just going to do an error function here, which is going to be immediately executed. We don't have any parameters we're going to pass in there because we don't need anything. So after that, we do, we do a simple console.log and say like, yo, this is ready. Boom. And we have practically already done. Like this is, this is already working as it is right off the bat. And how we're going to do that is we go to the Discord uh, website, which is called discordapp.com. And then we click on more. We go all the way down to developers because we are a developer. We go to authorized apps. Actually, this is not true. We go to my apps and click on new app. This one, we called it Yumiko, right? So it was Yumiko. We had, don't, I don't have an icon for Yumiko, I think. So what we're going to do is we're just going to use one of my old avatars somewhere here. She's not called Yumiko. Yeah, whatever. We're just going to use like one icon here, right? So, so we have an icon at least. After that, we create the app. After we created the app, um, we need to convert it to a bot account, which is obviously something we need to do. So we have a bot account right here. It's called Yumiko hashtag 0388. We click on reveal the token because this is what we're going to do. Copy the token. I'm going to change that token, by the way, so don't try to log in. Uh, we didn't do back in our editor. We're going to do client dot login and pass the token right in there. Like you should not do that. I'm going to explain a way how to not do that. But this is completely besides the point right now. We like, just do it for now. Um, after that, it's important, like we don't need the public board option right now. We don't need the of two grand right now. This is none of this is important. So we click on save changes. Um, and after that, what we need is our client ID right here. And with that, there's a prepared link already here pasted in. With that, what we need to do is I bring up my first link in the description below. So you know what to do with it. And you just put your client ID right behind it go to it and it will load up the page and it will basically tell you to invite your maker. So after you did that, you click on authorize, click on authorize. Oh shit. I forgot something. Kill me. You see, this is why, it, where you, where you, where you didn't, like, uh, fuck, what was it? And scope equals bot. Yeah, so this is it. I'm sorry. And and you just you just click on uh, the weep dev server right here because this is where we want to authorize our application. I'm obviously not a robot. <clears throat> so now we have it authorized. So what it does basically or what it did basically now is um, if we go to our Discord server right now. I need to add it to a role first so that it actually works. Yeah, if you go to our Discord server right now, we can actually see here, Yomiko is already here. Boom, ba boom. So now to start her up, which is one important thing, we need to do um, npm yomiko.js because this is what we call that thing. Now we just click enter and, oh my God, it's node, it's node, it's node, kill me. It's known to make it I'm very sorry. And it already prints out, yo, this is ready. So we can see in our Discord window right here. It's online. It's up and running. It's working. This is great. This is an achievement. You have a bot. It's online. It's online. Okay, but it doesn't do much, right? So we need to do something with it. So how are we going to do that? Okay, let's see. If we do client.on and we do hmm, message, I think it's called, right? So after that, we get parameter right here. We need the message right here. And this is important. Depending on what you call this, if you call it, actually, this is wrong. If you call it like message, or if you call it message, or if you call it ABC, or if you call it context, or whatever you want to call it, it this is important because this is how you're gonna how your variables look like in that block. If someone if you ever seen some snippet of code, and someone uses message channel, but you use message up here, like shortened, you cannot use that. What you would have to do, 
I, I don't really like doing this, but you, what you would have to do is like const message equals message. Uh, no, 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 this is the other way around. Const message equals message. So this way you could you could just copy and paste code all the way, right? Because it wouldn't matter. But we're not going to do this. We're just going to stick with message. But what we're going to do first is we're going to do a console log and the message to see actually how a message looks like. So for obviously for this, we need to restart the bot right here. Go back to Discord, type in like ASD, go back again, open it, and we see this is like a very big message right here. This is the whole message object. We don't need all of that. We don't need any of that currently. So we're going to be a bit more specific and be like content. Let's, uh, let's do message.content, right? We're going to restart, going to go back to Discord and say like, hi, Yumiko. So after we did that, we switch back to our editor again and we see hi, Yumiko which is exactly what we we want to see because this is the message content. So how are we going to do commands now? Well, we're going to do a simple ping command for, first of all, to actually see if the bot is working at all. So the simplest one, which is not what you should use, but this is for demonstration purposes, we're going to do message.content triple equals ping. This is super basic. Um, you could do some braces here, but you don't have to. Uh, and then you just do message or channel dot send and practically pong. And that's all there is to it. So what you do now is you restart it again. Wait for the deal just is ready. Go back to Discord and type in ping. And you get a pong. Boom. Now you can talk to her. Now you can say like ping. Pong. But this is all she does, so you wouldn't you wouldn't go very far with talking to her right now. So what we need to do is we need to find a way how to actually make sentences with her. So we can use we can use a different method here. We could just do if message dot content dot starts with ping. We could do message dot channel dot send then it send uh, pong right. So, God damn it. If we if we do that now, what we can do, we see in Discord, we can do ping. You are very nice, Yumiko, and she would say pong, right? So what this does basically is you can just type anything after that. It doesn't really matter. You can do, like as long as it starts with ping, it will always respond with pong. And this is important because some, some commands you want to, you want to do them and you, you don't want to care what's after it. So like some people, what some people like to do is they, there is a command, for example, if you have a music bot and you do, let's just use exclamation mark for demonstration purposes. And you do MP, which stands for now playing. And you want to do, uh, well, this would already execute the command, right? So if you do exclamation mark MP, you would get like an embed or like get any information about the currently playing song. But what some people like to do is like to, like to put hearts or some shit right behind it. So so they know like, oh, this is such a good song, right? So you obviously don't want to uh, stop executing the command just because someone put something behind something if it doesn't really matter. If it matters, obviously this is going to be a problem. Like if you have any parameters or, or like arguments behind it. So if you do MP, test and test actually stands for something then you know you cannot do that because it's an like, well you could but practically you wouldn't so this is basically all it this is it you have you have a bot you have it running it says pong to you you can do you can use starts with you can use equals and this is basically it for the first episode i'm going to do a second episode right after we're going to we're going to go very very fast from this point on so like this is just the beginning how you how you can install everything so stick to it and i see you guys later